A frightening twist in the Zika virus outbreak as the U.S. confirms the first case transmitted sexually within the United States. Dallas County, we have uh, received confirmation that it's spread otherwise through sexual activity. Officials say the patient is a Dallas resident who had not traveled but had sex with someone who visited Venezuela. The virus is primarily spread through mosquito bites. In pregnant women, it has been linked to an increase in birth defects. 25 countries in Central and South America are coping with the outbreak. With us this morning is infectious disease expert Dr. Neil Rao, and this is a twist. There seems to be, Neil, so many more questions than answers yes. right now. What would the CDC or the WHO be focusing on? Well, first of all, how common is it? It actually has been reported before in 2008. There's a case in the literature, but we kept saying this is anecdotal and it probably still is uncommon, but if we're seeing it happen in a traveler who brings it home and then passes it on to someone else, there is a bit of a twist because if this is a common problem, then the question will become if someone goes with their spouse to a place where there's Zika and the spouse is pregnant, when they come home, should they stop having sexual relations until the pregnancy is over? Because after all, if he comes down with it, he could pass it to her. Or likewise, if someone goes down as a business traveler or goes on a guy's trip down to the Yucatan and comes back from uh, uh, Cancun, and supposing there actually is a lot of Zika down there, a year from now, say, should that person, after coming back, not have sex with his spouse because she's pregnant? Those would be the questions that they would be asking. Again, if this is an uncommon problem, I don't think we should be going there yet. But this is the kind of question that's going to be asked. And also the other question will be asked by the WHO is how many of those cases of microcephaly, which we still are not certain are linked to Zika, but if it is, how many of them are related to sexual acquisition of this virus in pregnancy rather than a mosquito bite giving rise to it? And I'd heard, Neil, that Zika is actually part of a family yes. of viruses that's not meant to transmit through fluids. So Absolutely. what are we seeing here? So there may be something unique about Zika because, as you say, Zika is related to the West Nile virus, yellow fever, uh, dengue fever. All of these viruses do not transmit sexually. So this is a bit of a twist. We don't know that much about Zika because it was really uncommon until a year ago. The one case that happened in 2008, that was someone who went to West Africa and they came back to Colorado and then there was sexual transmission of the virus. But it was such a rare virus, no one really cared about it. Now we've got a virus that's not actually that dangerous to human health most of the time, but there's this question about microcephaly. If we dispel the microcephaly thing, then the whole public health emergency was all for naught. We didn't need to do this. But if, we're, if they were wrong, if they'd made the wrong call, you would have had a terrible tragedy where a whole bunch of kids got something and no one did anything about it. So that's that's the funny balance. And we don't know a lot about this Dallas case. We just know that a non-traveler, yes. uh, that their partner returned right. from, from Venezuela yes. and it was transmitted. Would it make a difference if it was transmitted female to female or male to female or, or does it matter? Um, it does matter in the sense I have a feeling this is a male to female transmission based on the other case that was described in the literature, but you're right, it's not clear yet which no. way it went. Um, I think we'd be much more concerned about male to female transmission because then we'd be giving all this different sexual advice to people uh, who have returned from Zika affected areas. Again, the frequency of this is the most important question. It, but we are now seeing more and more travelers getting this infection and so we're going to have a great opportunity to watch what happens to their partner because you, you didn't used to have the situation where you had someone leaving the Zika affected area and then coming down with it. Now if you have more and more cases, you get a quote, excellent experiment to find out what happens because we know for sure in Texas there's no mosquitoes right now, so that infection had to have been passed from person to person. It's not from another mosquito. A twist indeed. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in, Neil. Thanks for having me.